Welcome to What's Up Doc, a podcast by Merrimont Wellness Centers in Fort Collins, Colorado, hosted by Dr. John L. Bender, MD, Fellow of the American Academy of Family Physicians and CEO of Merrimont Wellness Centers. Our mission at Merrimont is to empower your communities and yourself to achieve healthcare and wellness aspirations anywhere in life. Well, welcome back to another exciting podcast of What's Up Doc. I'm Dr. John Bender, your host. With me is my faithful sidekick, uh, Janessa Visconti. Hello. So how are things in Toledo? Things are good. Getting warmer outside every day. Outstanding. Well, I was asked by our producer today what our topic is going to be, and I suggested that maybe we play semaglutide roulette. So how this works is we just take the search term semaglutide, we throw it into the Safari, because I'm on an iPhone browser, and we just see what pops up, and then we will take that topic and make that our, our title. Well, the first thing that pop up actually was the FDA. So it says that the FDA has approved Wagovi and Roselbus and Ozembic for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Well, that's, that's all good news. The other is it actually addresses compounding here, so we should probably take a look at that as well. So the FDA says, what is semaglutide? It's a class of medications that belongs to GLP-1, glucagon-like peptides. We know this. It mentions that rebelsis, I'm sorry, I mispronounced it earlier. I don't write a lot of it. It's, it's a pill, it's expensive, and there's not a generic and as you know, I like to save customers money. Uh, Ozembic and Wagovi, also FDA approved. They are all available only with prescription. There are no approved generic versions. So isn't compounded semaglutide a generic? We get that question. And what's the answer, Janessa? Yeah, and it. It is not. We have a buzzer. I'm sorry, Janessa. You'll have to be our next contestant. Just kidding. So it's actually not a true generic. A generic drug is one that is is basically the same mechanism, same formulation. There are no generics to brand name Wagovi, Ozembic, or Ribelsis. But can semaglutide be compounded is the question. So when a drug is in shortage, and this is just off the FDA website, compounders may be able to prepare a compounded version of the drug if they meet certain requirements. As of May 2023, Ozembic and Wagovi are both listed on the FDA's drug shortages list. Now, this is important because here's what I'm reading between the lines. They're saying to compounding pharmacies, you want to manufacture compounded semaglutide, you can. And this is why there are so many injectables on the market right now. In fact, it's almost become a commodity, which is good for consumers because that tends to uh, create some pressures. So remember back to macroeconomics, if you took that in high school, it's pushing down some of the, the cost to make it less expensive typically about an eighth of what a brand name uh, version of those semaglutide formulations would cost. It also maybe helps explain why there's not a lot of the ribelsis alternatives, because if ribelsis is not on the drug shortage list, perhaps making a compounded version of the pill would be very expensive and would also, because it, it uses a lot more medicine, but also might be illegal. It may be infringing on a on a, on a patent is the thing. And, and so until ribelsis is on that drug shortage list, may not see much in the way of oral formulations. Now we have tried some ribelsis and, and it works okay, but honestly, we seem to have much better results with the injectable. One of the most common side effects of these medications is what, Janessa? Nausea or queasiness, as we like to call it. Exactly. And reflux as well. Yes, absolutely. So if you are already having that and you have to take a pill, you may potentially vomit the pill. Well, then you've lost your medicine. At least with an injection, if you do suffer some nausea, we don't have to worry that you're going to lose the medicine, which is very expensive. So there's a number of different reasons why we just find it more practical to do the injection. And we, we have had over 1,500 patients that we have trialed on compound and semaglutide with outstanding results goes to 90% of, of our patient customers uh, getting results anywhere from four to 16 pounds in the first month. And, and we, I think our record right now is we've had an individual lose about 150 pounds with the, this medication. More commonly, probably 20 to 40 pounds. Most Americans aren't 100 pounds overweight. 
especially here in Colorado, where we are the thinnest state in the union. But we do have a lot of people 30 pounds overweight, and it's just perfect. Within two to three months of, of dosing, we can typically get them to goal and then quickly smart transition them to a very low microdose, which becomes very cost-effective. Uh, we maintain that for a year, and at the end of that time, they hopefully have a new normal such that they don't have to take some glutide till they're 102 years old. And we have successfully weaned a number of individuals off the medication, and they've been able to maintain their weight. Uh, any other thoughts on FDA, or what other questions did you have about FDA, Janessa? Um. My big question that I get from a lot of different patients is why doesn't the FDA cover the compounding pharmacies for semaglutide? So compounded semaglutide is not FDA approved. So the, the United States government is not going to make an insurance company pay for a drug if it's not FDA approved. And no manufacturer of a compounded semaglutide is going to spend the half billion dollars to try to get through the FDA process because it's not going to be something they can patent. They would have no way to recoup their investment the way that Nova Nordisk has in the case of, of their medication. So the reality is the economics aren't there. That's not how our system is designed. But the good news is it keeps the medication inexpensive, relatively inexpensive. We're proud of the $390 price point for a two-month supply because that roughly is one-eighth of the cost of brand name Wagobi, for example. And because of the supply chain shortage, uh, compounded semaglutide is less likely to be unavailable uh, next month. And so patients who embark on this, investing in themselves, they want to make sure that they can obtain their medication month after month. They don't want to have to be on it one month off the next, back and forth. That makes it very difficult to maintain glide slope. Well, folks, that's all the time we have. This has been another exciting issue of What's Up, Doc? We'll have to play semaglutide roulette again sometime. Yeah. Thank you so much, Janessa. Have a blessed day. Take care. Yeah.